podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another one more podcast podcast. My name is Yuval and there is uh, no one here because Blake got a new job and I'm happy for him, but he's still kind of going through all of that stuff. So without further ado, I'm just going to ramble and talk like I have been doing whenever I go out of town for work, but this time we have video because, you know, that's really lazy to say that you just want to do audio and uh, when you have the capabilities. But anyways, um, just I wrote a bunch of stuff down. Uh, I kind of want to go through it, some recent things that has happened to me and uh, I think uh, really interesting uh, conversations to be had based on these things that has happened to me. So without further ado, um, first things first, uh, I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with the uh, Studio Ghibli. Uh, they are a animation company that have put out a bunch of brilliant, brilliant, brilliant movies, and they're fantastic and amazing. So there's this guy, the creative director, Miyazaki. Uh, I, f- I honestly don't know if I've talked about him on the podcast or not, but he is a genius, and he has made a bunch of really, really good movies. And I'm actually in the process right now of going through and collecting each movie and watching it and like really taking it all in and stuff like that because, I mean, they're great movies. And so the current movie that I'm about to watch actually right after I uh, post this podcast or not post, but uh, finish this podcast um, is Howl's Moving Castle. And one thing that I did differently about this was the fact that I was actually listening to the soundtrack a lot like before I've even listened to the movie or watched the movie. Um, the it's, it's just very, this orchestral kind of swooping, large sound, sort of grandiose, uh, uh, instrumental soundtrack. And it's beautiful. It honestly, like movie fans or not, if you like animated movies now, this isn't like animated, like it's not like despicable me animated. This is actually like hand drawn animation, uh, you know, realistic looking people and all that good stuff. So, um, it's, it's so it honestly, the movies I've seen so far, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, they're top notch, high quality movies. I recommend them to anyone. Um, that's just something I've been kind of drilling through. Uh, and again, Howl's Moving Castle. Uh, so if you've seen it or if you want to watch it or whatever it is, do that as soon as you can and comment down below uh, what you like and what you don't like about it or just in general about Studio uh, Ghibli. Studio Ghibli is the word. Yes, sorry, I'm sweating and it's just I have no idea why. It's like a nice day outside, but for some reason uh, my body just likes to sweat. Uh, anyways, So a little bit of update on work for me. Um, It's been a while since I posted something, obviously. Uh, The, I don't know, I've just been kind of, ever since I got back from my work trips, I've just been kind of tired, generally speaking. Um, Not to say that I'm like fatigued or anything. I just, I feel like, you know, with the hustle and bustle of going out of state and going through all this whole process and stuff like that, and then finally coming back, I'm just kind of like, hmm, I could take a break. I'm I'm good. I can I can chill out. So um, yeah. I, I mean, other than that, work's kind of uh, usual. Uh, it's actually really interesting. I wrote I wrote this down earlier just because it sort of surprised me. And I mean, do, don't don't take this the wrong way or anything like that. But I had recently got excited for a meeting <gasps> at my job, <gasps> and I don't know. It it was weird because it wasn't even like anything super super special or groundbreaking or anything like that like to get excited for it was just a regular plan meeting to plan out like what the 2019 year is going to look for uh certain data and stuff like that within the our application and so it it was really weird because you know i i kind of have a technical background so it's like i can understand the jargon and i can understand all that stuff but for some reason up until this point i've kind of just been coming to work and doing my stuff and you know trying to put as much spin as i can to it but um you know even going on acquisitions and stuff trying to lend a hand and you know do everything i can to be good at the job but you know you, you don't really have that like that career driven passion and that happiness and excitement and stuff like that, that, you know, you, you, you talk to a microbiologist and I'm sure they'll talk your ear off about how much they love their job and stuff like that. So it was weird. It was kind of interesting. And like, it, it wasn't like a total shock for me. I was like, Oh my God, why am I liking this job? Because it, it is a good job. You know, uh, it is definitely something that I've been able to sort of see myself grow into and, you know, do, do as much as I can to expand and grow. But 
it was just sort of threw me off guard. So I actually started writing a, a really dumb poem and I may or may not have it ready for next podcast about it. I don't know. It's stupid. I like writing things and it's really weird because I don't know if you guys have listened to my open books um, on, on my channel and it's just it's weird because whenever I'm rambling and sort of kind of like these podcasts where it's sort of ad lib and, you know, the conversations can flow from point to point, I'm just like, it's easier for me to sort of just spew out and get my point across, you know, whether I'm repeating the repeating the thing a million times to get it across or if I'm trying to rephrase it a million times, whatever it is, you know, I, I feel more, a little more comfortable expressing that. But with writing for me, it's really weird because I, I have this exact vision of what I want to say and what it's supposed to sound like and what it's supposed to come out to and all that kind of stuff. But for some reason I get stuck and it's a little difficult for me. And, you know, I've got like on my phone, I've got like a crap, like lines and lines. I don't want to say pages because I don't know how many, if, I, I wouldn't even say it's like a full page probably because these are all just notes on my phone, but lines and lines and lines of just writing and ideas and concepts and all just sort of stuff. And it's really weird because, um, I had a, p I had a piano, re piano lesson recently. Um, I've been doing that, uh, very sporadically, but trying to learn piano. And, you know, we, we, uh, my teacher is that who is actually a family friend. We were talking about sort of my creativity process and it's just really weird because I feel like I'm always starting things and, you know, getting the ideas and the foundations down. It's like, okay, we're going to do this, 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 this is going to be cool. And then we're going to write about this or we're going to play this little ditty or whatever it is. And you get the very basic sense of it, but then, you know, my my uh, finishing it and like actually coming out with a fully fledged out, fully produced, fully whatever is little to none, which I don't know if that's something that everybody experiences or if that's just me because I'm lazy or I just have trouble or I just don't have the right training or anything like that to fully flesh out a song or a poem or whatever it is. So it's, it's weird for me. It's that that whole process is kind of just a it's definitely hit or miss. I guess they never miss, huh? Um, and, you know, whether or not it comes out good or bad, I don't really care. I just, the, 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 the process of getting something out there and just, you know, taking the words that are in my brain uh, and putting it on paper and actually making it coherent is my, my goal, at least I'm trying to. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, other than that, uh, this is kind of the, we're moving into sort of the uh, big section portion that I wanted to talk about. Um, and essentially, I'm just trying to see, make sure I didn't skip anything else. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. So th this is probably going to be a short episode, honestly, um, unless I can just talk forever for the next, I don't think you guys want to hear me talk about this subject for the next 30 minutes or 40 minutes, I don't know, whatever. I'm just going to talk. Uh, enough of that. So I bought a car recently. Um, coming back from my work trip, I got home and went to my, I had a Prius, uh, previously a 2007, uh, Prius, uh, black and small and not very powerful, but still, uh, um, it's, uh, anyways, coming back, I drove the car, it seemed fine. And it was the day I got back driving back to like back from work home. I turn on my car and just all the lights on the vehicle just flash up on the dashboard. And it was just like, immediately I was just like, oh, great. Because, I don't know, I, I was hoping that my car could last me um, at least another year. Uh, it's Because it's, it's got like upwards of 200,000 miles. It's like 11 years old. You know, it's definitely not like a pristine. But, I mean, I've taken care of it and I've done a lot of maintenance. And I've tried to do preventative maintenance and stuff like that on the car. Because, you know, I'm one of those handy dandy boys that doesn't want to shell out a million dollars for a, a mechanic to do something for 30 seconds. So I'll do it for three hours and save $10. But through that process, I feel like I've learned a lot about the car. And I feel like I've learned a lot about car maintenance and, you know, good routines and good uh, habits to have. But with this one, it was just like immediately took it to an auto zone or actually I went to a Firestone. They do free readings on your car for the uh, uh, whatever ECU or whatever it's called. And so the bajillion different codes 
and we were trying to just go through the codes and figure out, okay, well, this is sort of just a, this is an offshoot because of the main code, all right? Well, this is also an offshoot and just trying to find the actual source of the problem and come to find out it was the hybrid battery. And unlike regular car batteries, this hybrid battery is super expensive and super hard to exchange and it's like locked in. And if you open up the, end, uh, the hood of the car, you'll see just this giant like silver thing right in the center and it's like the engine battery mix combo i honestly i don't even know i could be totally wrong on all that but um needless to say it was going to be like three grand starting <gasps> hello cat this is my cat i don't know if i've ever actually officially um acknowledged her on the podcast but this is Harper, and I've had her for a while, and I'm. she has been on the podcast a few times before, just kind of like getting on the tables. Uh, generally, when I have uh, other people on the show, I'll just keep her out because she's very distracting, but I got her like a year ago. Harper, come here. Baby, come here. Look at this cat. She just wants love. Come here. Look at this baby. Look at this baby. So, um, so yeah. So, where was I? Cars. Well, first cat. So... This is a cat. She's my baby. Um, she's really annoying when it comes to like in the middle of the night. She'll just sort of run around and be really annoying and loud and push over stuff. And I actually just recently got her this uh, three leveled little uh, ball batting thing that the balls are on a track. And so she can just hit it and it goes around the track as much as she wants. And I'll... <laughs> <laughs> at first she didn't even touch it and she didn't even like want to use it or play with it or anything like that but then a couple days later i just hear because she's like just going wild with it and it's like she'll flip it over and it'll go across the room and it's all sorts of crazy stuff so uh she's she's my baby uh and i love dogs dogs are great don't get me wrong but cats are easier to manage and when you're living in an apartment <laughs> Uh, it's a lot easier for that kind of stuff because I don't want to be one of those trashy people who just let their dogs poop on their balcony and then they don't ever clean it and they don't ever do anything about it and then people take photos of them. And yeah, you don't want to end up like that person. But anyways, back to the car story. So uh, readings were all that. The Prius battery, $3,000, uh, probably more with like repairs and stuff. So I figured, all right, this is my time to um, find a new car, obviously. And I don't know, through this whole process, and the, the main thing I want to talk about is like people's people's experience and my personal experience at the dealership or at some, at a location to purchase cars. I guess if you do like a used car lot, it might be different than an actual like a Toyota or Hyundai or is Hyundai? Hyundai is a, a manufacturer um, uh, uh, or, you know, any of those, any of those like official whatever. And I know they're like governmently government regulated mandated sort of things i this, there's a there's a video you can watch and um it's essentially going over how the fact that a bunch that the dealerships essentially have a monop a legal monopoly on uh uh, uh the different locations and stuff because long, long story short i'm totally going to butcher it and shorthanded this but essentially in a area, so let's take the state of Texas, it's divided into counties and it's subdivided from there into like certain districts or whatever they're called. And so essentially uh, for a for a person or a organization to sell cars at that location, they have to get a permit and a license and a whatever and they go through all this regulation and stuff like that. But their rules saying that like, you know, you can only have this many dealerships in this area and you can only have this many things here and you can only have. And then if you're if you have a dealership here, then uh, uh, up to a certain number of um, car other dealerships can be in that area. And there, there's all sorts of rules and regulations. But bottom line is, uh, you know, Toyota and um, I know other uh, car company names. Honestly, I, for some reason, I'm trying to. I'm blanking on all of them. Don't don't judge me as a person, please. Uh, but anyways, they they they're they're there, and so now now that everything has been established, and now that all the dealerships have popped up and everything like that, we're not going to see new dealerships. We're we're not going to see unless the law changes. We're not going to see new ones because the 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 dealerships have their corner and they have their areas, and it's all been assigned and located, and it's all officially regulated where no other dealerships can come up um, in the areas that you already see them. So it's like that's kind of screwy. I know I totally give a horrible explanation of all that, but it is what it is. So anyways, dealership. 
I'm like, all right, I never have bought a car before. This was my first car purchase. And it was really stressful for me because there's that whole thing about haggling for car prices and haggling for vehicles and all sorts of stupid stuff. And I just really hate all that because, you know, I don't care about the money. Well, I mean, I do care about the money, but it's like, I just, I want to like, when I'm playing a game and I'm trying to win or if I'm watching a thing or if I'm following someone's rules, I want to know all the rules on the table. So like I want to know what the the how you lose, how you win, uh, what are all the stipulations, is there a are there exceptions, you know, everything like that. As long as you can tell me the rules of the game and everything's clear, I'm good. You know, let's haggle away, let's, you know, let's let's cut prices and do whatever and let me let me walk out because for whatever reason that's a tactic that we have to do is just saying no, leaving, waiting a couple days, them calling you back, then you calling them. And it's like that why is that part of the process? Cuz that's dumb. I don't want to have to, because I only had two days to find a car. Uh, my my boss was like, you know, it, here you take the next two days, find the car. Uh, but otherwise, if you can't find a car, find a way to get to work uh, on Friday. And I was like, well, great. So I guess I only have two days to find a car. And this whole process for me, and first of all, it was like, um, I had a plan to pay off my student loans uh, at a month at a time, and then by by next year's time, my student loans would be paid off. And then now it's like with this new car, I have to figure out what the car payments. Okay, now so now it's like okay, now my plan, my quote unquote life plan, is now uh, has to be altered, and it's just kind of stupid. And so I guess that for me made the process a little more stressful because the first time I went to the the dealership. Um, I, I figured I would just stay with Toyota just because one, they can take the trade in, they do a trade in for the pre actual Prius. Um, even though it's like dying, they can still salvage it and spare parts and whatever else they can get from the vehicle. Um, so I traded that in along with the deal and they offered me a few other things, but I was looking at the new Priuses and they all sucked and I didn't really like them. And so I was like, okay, well, what else is there? Well, uh, the Corolla is okay. It's kind of on the cheaper end of the car, which I mean, a cheap car is not bad. I just wanted something that's going to last me a while because, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to have to, you know, five years down the road, have to swap out or get a new car or do some kind of major, major replacements and stuff like that. So I saw that the Camrys, uh, the actual, the hybrid Camrys were uh, getting a lot of good ratings and a lot of good scores and a lot of good everything across the board there. So I was looking at that and I sat in a Camry and I was like, wow, this is really great. And this is awesome. And this is on the show floor room. And I was like, well, can I test drive this? And he's like, well, we got a different version here, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I really like the car. Um, and that's what I chose. Spoiler alert, if you couldn't guess when I ended with Camry, uh, I got a, a 2019 Camry hybrid. And honestly, it's a really great car. And I like uh, all the bells and whistles and stuff like that. And I mean, it's relatively affordable for me based on how much I'm making. And... I mean, at the tail end of it, I guess it was okay, but it's like, I don't know if I'm getting a good deal or not. That, that Like what I was saying before, I don't know what the rules of the game are, so I don't know if like, you know, I could be, I'm expecting to pay this certain number, X number of dollars, and then all of a sudden, whoop, just kidding, it, because you didn't, because you didn't know about it, you lose out on it. You know what I mean? Like the deals or, or quote unquote price matching or whatever policies or anything that they're trying to do to sell the car. Um, it's, it's just kind of like, <laughs> sorry. I don't, I don't appreciate, I don't like that. And that's why I don't really like going to the dealership because the guy, when I was talking to the sales guy and I, I didn't even know he was an official sales associate. I, I thought he was just someone on the show floor room just to like, uh, help, help out other people. But I guess he's a junior sales associate, whatever it is. Um, he was very much of the mindset that like he wasn't talking whenever we were talking about the price, cause he gave me a piece of paper and I, and again, memory is a little flawed at this point, but he was essentially, he gave me this piece of paper when we were discussing the price of the car. And he's like, here, here's, here's what you're going to end up with. Pick a, uh, pick a, a rate and pick a monthly payment that looks good for you. And we can get you going. So first of all, it's like, okay, wait, you're going to charge me sticker price without even you're like from the get go. That's what we're doing. Why? Like, why? Why is that? So I'm like, wait a second. That's not right. Because I can I see other prices and stuff like that. It's looking like I can get at the tail end of this to this. And here's the range. What can you do for me? And it was just like, 
I felt like I was kind of talking to a wall and hoping something would happen as if like I say the correct combination and correct magical number of words and then oop I've unlocked a better deal and I just don't like that I really don't and I mean I've kind of already said this but I'm going to say it again that that just whole process of not knowing just kind of flusters me I mean and it's more not even like stressful but it's just flustering where I'm like okay I you know I don't feel like I can just take a second because I, at least for me personally, I, I kind of felt like, okay, what's the next step? Or what's the next step? Or, you know, let's keep going. You know, there wasn't any break time for me to think like, is this the car that I want? Is this like, what are the specifics? Obviously that's on me. I should have done way more prep work, way more, um, you know, research, like a whole ton more kind of that kind of stuff. But in this instance for me, I was just sort of under the gun and I was just kind of, all right, well, uh, what, what sounds good? Can I afford the payments? All right, deal. Um, I mean, I wasn't like super that quick about it, but either way, um, I don't know if dealerships lie. I don't know if, I mean, obviously they would never admit to lying, but just something about that price haggling process was just kind of sketchy for me and I didn't like it. And next time I go to a dealership, I'll have to be more aware about it and have to be more uh, careful with what I say and what I do and everything like that. But, um, yeah, and so then after I chose, after we haggled on the price, I went to the finance billing guy, and then even then there was more haggling. There was more like, okay, well, do you want this warranty and that thing and that? And warranties suck. I hate warranties. Like the fact that we have to buy extra money for warranties, I would just rather buy a more expensive vehicle or a more expensive item and have like a lifetime warranty or have a you know fifty bajillion mile warranty or whatever. That would be great. That would be perfect. That'd be excellent. No problem. But the fact that it's like, oh, well, you get this kind of base warranty, but then if you want this, this, or this, this extra stuff, this is all going to cost you extra. And I'm like, ah. So uh, going through that whole process, I signed everything, got my car, got the keys. It was all nice and ready to go. Literally drove it right off the show, show flume, showroom floor. Can't talk for some reason. And I went home. And I was stressing out about that whole situation because one the payments I was a little worried about because it was a little more than what I was like I was expecting a to, I had a range of what I could pay and and by no means would I've ever accepted a deal like of payments that I couldn't afford obviously like that's the basic finance 101 but um when I got home and I was really everything was sinking in it was like okay well, what did I just get myself into? Why did I make this decision? I feel like I made a really heavy decision, didn't take that into super consideration. It's like, obviously not not the same, but I felt kind of the equivalent of like pulling someone's life support just on a whim. And obviously, yes, a car and life support is not the same thing at all, but it was kind of, it, at least at the time for me, that, that gravitas was right there. And I think that's how you use the word gravitas. Uh, maybe, I don't know. And so I was kind of just like freaking out and I was sort of like, all right, okay, I I don't know what to do, whatever, whatever. Let's just, okay, maybe let's just try and suppress this feeling and go from there and maybe life will continue. And at this time, I've only, you know, driven the car uh, from the dealership to my apartment. I didn't even drive the same car when I was test driving, right? And so it was, I think I woke up at like three or four in the morning and I was like, oh, for whatever reason, I, I like, I honestly don't know. I didn't have an alarm. I didn't do anything. I just woke up naturally and I was like, oh shit, what time is it? And so, uh, I, at this point I was like, okay, well I might as well like swap over my insurance and, you know, make sure that that's all recorded and stuff like that. And holy crap, that's a whole other process. But, uh, long story short, updated my vehicle information and lo and behold to me, my, uh, rate went up like let's just to be dramatic, uh, about a uh, rounding up when about $400 up. And I was like, Oh, that's a no, I don't like that at all. Ooh, right. in right in the kisser. And I, at that point I was freaking out because that was an unexpected payment. I didn't expect it to go that much. Like I knew the insurance rate with a new car is supposed to go up a little bit theoretically again i don't even know if that's the truth like what insurance agencies are you lying to me about whatever i don't know um so at that point i call my dad and i'm like you know crying on the phone and i'm just freaking out and i'm like okay i can't do this this is blah, 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 blah. so he's like talking me through and calm you know trying to calm me down and stuff like that and 
I mean, he, he gave me probably some of the best advice, not, not ever, but like at the time, some of the best advice. And that was just purely just go sit in the car and go drive it around. Because to me, for me, I really was just seeing that big financial number. I was seeing that big number, the big monthly payments. I was just seeing cash that I'm losing that I'm not going to be able to have, or I'm going to have to spend or whatever that I wasn't expecting to. And that's what was freaking me out. And, you know, not actually like the, it's like as if in my brain it wasn't connecting. It was like, okay, because I, I buy things all the time. You know, I'm not I'm not a shopaholic or anything, humble brag. But um, for me, it's like when I purchase something, you know, it sort of goes in the background. And it's like, okay, now my life is going to get that much better because I have this now new object. And so doing a car, with a car, it was sort of like a, a, a la- latitude, flatitude, uh, I don't know. I'm not stupid. Horizontal, yes, horizontal is the word. Uh, it's like a horizontal shift, and God, I'm so retarded. Um, and for me, that I didn't see any gaining in value. I didn't see it was like, okay, well, I drive my car to work and I drive my car around. Great. Now I have now I'm now spending more money on a vehicle for doing this same exact thing, and so um, it was just it was messing with my mind, and so I was freaking out. And I honestly, even after the, my conversation with my dad, uh, I, I I try and go to him for a lot for advice, and I try and go to him for because uh, you know he's old and experienced, and you know that that can definitely help uh, at least with my train of thought. And I don't know. And I honestly, it was early, and I was kind of still tired and hazy, but the conversation ended well. Um, you know, he he kind of put me at least a little bit back into my mindset. But what really, really helped me was driving the car to work because I, I've, again, granted, I've only driven from the dealership to my apartment, which is like 10 minutes, if that. And so I drove that car to work in the morning and that was amazing. And I just like it really sunk in. I was like, OK, this is my car. This is something I own. I'm not renting it. I'm not leasing it. You know, th- this is something that I can do and drive around and enjoy myself with. And, you know, all the features and gizmos and gadgets and stuff like that, uh, you know, was was great. And I was like, OK, I can do this. You know, this is this is totally fine. And luckily for me, the uh, the a couple days later, um, I was able to talk to an insurance provider. I swapped insurance people. I went over to Progressive and they actually got me. I'm actually now paying less than what I was paying uh, with my Prius, which is weird. I don't get it. I don't know. I'm not going to ask questions, but like it was like it was stupid cheaper. And, and and again, that's I don't why. Why is it stupid cheap with one company, but like stupid expensive in another? Is there a difference? What are the rules? What, what, what are they charging based on? What are their rates? Like like it's all that kind of stuff in this discussion and that I hate. And well, I don't hate. I mean, you know, hate is such a strong word. But it, I, post purchase, I'm very happy with the car. It's all all said and done, dust is settled, life moves on. I'm very happy. I, I think I made. I think I made a decent decision. Uh, I went with the hybrid, but it actually now has some horsepower behind it because it's not just a Prius. And you know, life moves on, and life will continue. And uh, it, it, it kind of is what it is. So. Um, I mean, if you guys have any uh, comments or stories or similar situations that you guys got yourself into, definitely love to hear it. Love, love to let me know. Um, you know, makes me feel <laughs> makes me feel a little better that uh, I definitely don't have. Um, or sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. It would make me feel better to know I'm not crazy if other people have similar stress stories. I mean, you don't have to be stressed about it, but at least recognizing that the dealership can be filled with crappy people is uh, one thing. Um, real quick, I wanted to uh, give, well, not like, not more shout outs, but like just still, you know, to acknowledge this because I think it's important and I think it's great because I love interacting with all you guys and seeing all of your comments and everything like that. So uh, we're just going to go through on the last video that I uh, sh- gave a bunch of shout outs. Um, Yun Cho, thank you. Uh, love you. Love your face and appreciate all of your comments. Uh, Olga, again, appreciate you. You're super great and amazing. Hey, cat lover, I haven't forgotten about you. I mean, I kind of did, but then I didn't. And so now I know that you're still listening because I don't know. You, you comment on one video and then it's like time passes and then, okay, great. 
Are you still listening? I don't know. I just see numbers. I, I know average, I get probably like 12 to 15 likes per video. So I know at least 12 to 15 humans are watching it, whether or not I know all of you or whether or not I, uh, uh, you know, from, from whatever walks of life you come from either way, cat lover. I, I, I see you. I see you. Um, Everett again, my boy, uh, I'm totally appreciate you. Uh, just like you appreciate me uh dk obviously uh day one fan uh brian campbell again day one fan i don't know if you guys are day one or not uh and uh i'm <laughs> i was gonna say sylvia again uh celia thank you god i'm so like i for so i don't know i'm not even gonna not even gonna start that but anyways thank you guys uh for uh the comments and the the interactions and the stories and all the anecdotes yourself uh definitely love all of that please 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 keep doing it um and also you know send it to your friends and stuff like that anyways guys that's gonna do it for us today so thank you so much appreciate all of you guys for commenting uh i know this was kind of short but anyways uh have a fantastic day night or whenever you're listening to this podcast Peace.